Welcome to Finished Work International Ministries, a ministry that is on the cutting edge, changing lives around the world. As you let God in today and apply the word, expect a divine encounter and supernatural transformation. It is impossible for you to be defeated when you have the revelation of the will of God. It is impossible for situations to subdue you when you walk in understanding of what God is saying to you. Let the finished work of Jesus determine what you pray. When God is your source, you don't look back. You keep looking forward. You keep trusting. God, I trust you. Here's Apostle Faith Man Obuena. I want to appreciate everyone that is in this service today and those that are watching all over the world. I just want to say thank you for logging in this morning to receive the engrafted word of God. And today we'll continue our teaching on the school of the spirit and we're looking at diverse kind of tongues. Hallelujah. And today I'd like us to look at this teaching on tongues is very important to the New Testament believer. I'd like us to get to our text for this meeting. Our text is in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And let's look at verse 10. He said, to another the walking of miracles. We did that some few weeks back. To another prophecy. To another designing of spirits, to another diverse kind of tongues. So today our teaching is a diverse kind of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. Tongues has started. Uh, especially if we look at the New Testament, the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2. If you're with me, you can go to Acts chapter 2, and we'll see how the all of this started in the New Testament. And the church started in the book of Acts. Hallelujah. After the visitation of the Holy Ghost, you have the church in Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sun from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, a sun from heaven. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They, they started speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. It is the Spirit that gives utterance. Someone cannot be taught how to pray in tongues. You know, some people said, you have to say what I say, utterance. The Spirit gives utterance, and the person brings forth the word. It comes out of them. But it is the Spirit that gives utterance. According to the scripture we read there, I said, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues, filled with the Holy Ghost. Um, I want to say something here. If someone can have the Holy Spirit in their life, but they don't speak in tongues. Because tongues is a gift of the Spirit. Someone can have the Holy Spirit in their life. Every believer in the body of Christ have the Holy Spirit in them because no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Ghost. No one can say that Jesus is Lord. So we came to Jesus by the Holy Ghost. It was the Holy Spirit that helped us to recognize who is Jesus. Who couldn't have known who is Jesus except by the Holy Ghost. 
It was by the Holy Spirit that we recognize the ministry of Jesus. Today we have a relationship with Jesus because the Holy Spirit told us that this is Jesus. This is who Jesus is. So nobody can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Ghost. So the Spirit of God is in every believer. But that doesn't mean that every believer speaks in tongues because you have Christians who are in division concerning this matter. Some Christians believe that speaking in tongues has ended with the early church. They believe that the days of miracles have ended with the early church. They believe that the days of healing has ended. There are Christians who don't believe in healing, but they are Christians. But that will not make them go to hell. You get what I'm saying right now? There are Christians who don't believe in speaking in tongues, but that will not make them go to hell. But you see, the, the manifestation of the gift of healing is for here. It's not for heaven. The, the manifestation of the gift of tongue is for here. It's not for heaven. The walking of miracles is here. You don't have walking of miracles in heaven. Because in heaven, you don't need miracles. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Okay. In heavens, you don't need miracles. In, in heavens, you don't need the gift of healing because heaven is a perfect state. So the gifts of the spirit was given to us to function in the earth. This is why we have the gifts of the spirit. So speaking in tongues, praying in tongues or praying the spirit is a supernatural language. It's a, what is a supernatural language. When I was not born again, I used to wonder when I hear people speak in tongues, I say, what are they doing? You know, I used to think, you know, how did that happen? The reason why I didn't know how it happened, I was not in their midst. I don't, I, I'm not in their midst. I'm not connected to why that happened. And when I gave my life to Jesus, one of the experiences I had was that experience of praying in tongues. Now, in this ministry, I've had people who called me and said, Apostle, I'm believing God to speak in tongues. You know, I'm believing God that... I'll be able to receive the gift of tongues and say, I say, if you believe it, you can have the experience. And I think one of them is here today. And we prayed, and immediately the power of God came upon her and she started praying in tongues. Now, we there has to be a reason why God wants us to hear this message on tongues. Because when you pray in tongues, you'll be more sensitive towards the things of the Spirit. When you pray in tongues, there is something that tongues do for us. When you start praying in tongues, uh, you are quick to assess the release of the Spirit. When you pray in tongues, you're, you're quick to, there are certain situations you don't know what to do. You don't know how to handle it. But when you start praying in the Spirit, there are certain insights that the Holy Ghost drop in you. So, Maybe now you don't pray in tongues. You don't need to be against it. You just need to open your mind and say, Lord, you got to teach me how this work. You, you need to help me how this work. Many years ago, let me tell you this. Many years ago, I was a motivational speaker. I can motivate people. I can teach people on business and so many things in church, you know. And one day I had a dream. Let me tell you. Maybe I haven't told you this. Maybe you needed to hear this. One day I had a dream. In this dream, a man was in a wheelchair. And then it was like a crusade meeting. Then I look at the man, I said, get up from the wheelchair. And the man got up and walked. Then I heard a voice. This is how it's supposed to be. This is how you're supposed to do ministry. You know, you know, so that was, you know, you know, so there is difference between the gospel and motivation. They're not the same. There is difference between the gospel. And motivate. some people said they are motivational speakers. Nothing wrong with that. I'm not against that. But I'm just trying to let you know that there is a difference. Motivation cannot bring healing. Miracles. With motivation, you can't tell a blind man, let your eyes be open right now. Receive your sight. You can't do that. Because you don't have that spiritual energy to produce that kind of result. But for you to see the supernatural manifestation, then you have to believe, if you believe in word of knowledge, if you believe in word of wisdom, you have to also believe that the gift of tongue is for today because they are all in the same line. Look at this scripture. Let me read it again to you. First Corinthians chapter 12. If we watch this, First Corinthians chapter 12, I want to say this. 
In First Corinthians chapter 12, look at this from verse 10. He said, to another is given the working of miracles. First Corinthians 12, verse 10. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, design of spirits. To another, diverse kind of tongues. To another, all of these things are called the gifts of the spirit. Now, I noticed something about God. If you don't desire them, you can't see them. If you don't desire them, one day I asked God a question. I said, why am I not, many years ago, I asked God a question. I said, why am I not seeing healings? Why am, why am I not seeing people being healed, miracles, you know, things like that? You know what he told me? You don't have sick people in your church. If you have sick people around, you will see it. You don't see healing where everybody's healed, where everybody's healthy. <laughs> you don't see healing where everybody's healthy. So I asked that question. But you see, because I wanted to see that. I wanted to see why would Jesus look at someone and say, receive your sight? And it happens. Why would Jesus look at somebody and say, wake up from the dead? And it happens. Why would Jesus look at someone and say, let us be clean? And it happened. I want to see that. Now watch this. If you don't have desire for the manifestation of the things of the spirit, you can see the manifestation. The things of the spirit works by desire. Desire can be likened to a force of attraction. What attracts, what pulls the things of the spirit? You see, to the degree you demand or you have an expectation will determine the manifestation you're going to have. So the things of the spirit doesn't jump on you. The things of the spirit does not jump on you. So here he talks about the diverse kind of tongues. So I like us to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2, he said, For he that speaketh in unknown tongue, speak not unto men, but unto God. For him that speaks, First Corinthians 14, verse 2, he said, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, Speak at not unto men. So when someone is praying in tongue, he's not talking to men. He's not talking to men. He says, speak at not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. How be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. So tongue is seen as mysteries. How be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. So tongues are seen as mysteries that when you're praying in tongue, you are having a communication with God. That was why the early church had that operation. You see, if you watch the early church, if you want to really see some uh, mighty demonstration of the power of God, take time and read the book of Acts with an open heart and say, Lord, what I saw in this book, I want to see it around my life. You will see all kinds of manifestations and miracles, all kinds of healing and demonstration of the spirit that most people don't see in churches today. Some churches today are like graveyards. Some churches today are dead churches. Sorry, to, I don't want to hit anybody, but some, some places are, you can see the supernatural release of the Spirit. The church was supposed to be a place where people come to have an encounter with God, where people are supposed to have visitations of the Spirit, where people are supposed to have outpouring of the Spirit, where they're supposed to have demonstration of the Spirit. But you can't have demonstration of the Spirit in an atmosphere where the Holy Ghost is not being exalted. You can't. You can hear good sermons. You can hear good teachings, but you cannot see the manifestation of power. For the manifestation of power, there has to be a desire. Thank you, Lord. Every believer in the body of Christ can walk in power. This has nothing to do with, oh, I'm not an apostle. I'm not a prophet. I'm not a teacher. No, the manifestation of the spirit is open to every believer. The manifestation of the Spirit is open to everyone in the body of Christ. You should be able to know the next move of the enemy. True. You should be able to know the next thing that is about to happen. Why? Because if you're led by the Spirit, you will flow with the Spirit. Thank you, Father. If you're led by the Spirit, you will flow with the Spirit. If you're led by the Spirit, you will understand the manifestations of the Spirit. If you're led by the Spirit, you will have visitations from the Spirit. If you're led by the Spirit, so it said, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God, for no man understandeth him. Wow, this is powerful. It said, No man understandeth him. 
How be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. How be it in the spirit he speaketh what? He speaketh mysteries. So it, when you're praying in tongues, you're speaking mysteries. Now, I want to show you this other scripture here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 14. In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 14, he said, For if you pray in an unknown tongue, so sorry, sorry, for if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. If I pray in tongues, he said, my spirit prayeth. My spirit prayed, my, my spirit prayed, but my understanding is unfruitful. And, and watch this. I want to show you something. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 18. In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 18, he said, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than ye all. Ah, if there was one thing Paul was uh, boasting about or was glad about, he said, I, I, I speak in tongues more than ye all. I speak in tongues. And no one was having so much revelation. It was having so much revelation because he prays in the spirit. He prays in the spirit. He was having so much revelation because he prays in the spirit. One of the keys to assessing supernatural is to pray in the spirit. One of the keys to having supernatural insight is to pray in the spirit. And praying in the spirit is the key to spiritual boldness. One of the keys to a supernatural boldness is when you pray in the spirit. When you pray in the spirit, when you pray in the spirit, you have access to heavenly communication. One of the keys to having access to heavenly communication is when you pray in the spirit. When you pray, the, one of the keys to having or growing your sensitivity. Thank you, Lord. So many things are coming to me at the same time. Or one of the keys to spiritual sensitivity is praying in the spirit. How did you know about what happened 30 years ago? You were not there. <laughs> you want to know what happened 40 years ago? Do you want to know what happened 25 years ago? Do you want to look at someone and tell them what happened five years ago? But you were not there. But you told them what was, has happened five years ago. Some people think you have to be a prophet to know. No, you don't have to be a prophet to know. You just have to be a believer that has spiritual sensitivity to know. <laughs> you don't have to be a prophet to know. Oh, this prophet could see you. Oh, this prophet could reveal things. Let me say this to you. Revealing things are the primary aspect of faith. <laughs> oh, you don't need to hear this. You want to hear this today? <laughs> I said revealing things are the primary aspect of faith. There are deep things of faith than revealing the situations of people. And you know, in the body of Christ, people used to, oh, that man could see. Oh, you know, some people have asked me a question before. Apostle, can you see? I don't know what they're talking about. You know what they're trying to ask me? Do I see into people's future? Do I see this? Do I see that? I'm not a witch doctor. <laughs> There are things I don't do. <laughs> you better develop your spirit to know what God is telling you. You know, can I say this to you? You can have relationship with God to a point you can see everything that happens. I'm telling you. It's so easy to receive from what was that person? Why are you telling me this apostle is not true? Listen, listen. Manifestations of the gifts of the Spirit. They are primary aspect of our faith work. They are primary. They are common. But do you know why it's a big deal to them, the body of Christ? Because most preachers think that it's a big deal to have word of knowledge, to have word of wisdom, to have the sending of spirit. Oh, they said it's not easy. It is easy. If you spend time with God, you can see, you can hear, you can know. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I said, if you spend time with God, you can see, you can hear, you can know. Because as your spirit, as you begin to pray in the spirit, you're quick to understand the things of the spirit. As you begin to pray in the spirit, 
you're quick to understand the things of the spirit. There were certain things you want to understand. I had a vision one period. In that vision, I was having this occurrence of deaths, you know, back to back like that. A vision, you know, just coming. And while I was having that vision, one of our family members was going through a health issue. You see, the reason for prophetic vision is for intersection. You want to make those pancakes? The, 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 the reason for, for prophetic vision is for intersection. Now, another reason why God gives us prophetic vision is to show us activities that are going on that we're not aware of. There are supernatural activities around us. Huh? There are supernatural activities around us. So when we pray in the spirit, we always, you know, there is this divine alignments. You know, you just see yourself. You, you didn't know why you took the left road. You didn't know why you, you didn't board that flight. You didn't know why I'm not easy with that journey. You know, you, you're supposed to travel, but you're feeling uneasy. You know, you are not okay with it. You, you know, you, you can develop yourself to know when there is a danger ahead of you. And let me say this to you. You can develop yourself to know when there is a satanic trap. Yeah, you can develop yourself. You know, one thing Satan likes to do, like I tell people, he, he disconnects people from divine relationship that helps them get better. You know, today I was a little bit broken because I had someone who used to come to a local church for many years and later they walked away and things like that. So the young fellow came back today and, you know, and said he wants to see me. I said, what could be the problem? He started sharing with me about the issue of his wife leaving him and had a divorce issue, so many crises. I wasn't happy with that. I wasn't happy with that. I felt bad in my spirit. You see, sometimes God puts you in a place. You may not get everything you're looking for at that moment, but he knows why he put you there. He knows why he kept you there. And sometimes we don't know why. You know, a lot of people think you can do whatever you want to do. And I often say to them, you can't do whatever you want to do. You got to do what is in line with God's will as you don't hurt yourself. You can hurt yourself. You can hurt yourself when you start doing what you want to do. No, you can't do what you want to do. Because you got to do what God is leading you into. You got to do what the Spirit of God is leading you into. Your peace is in hearing the voice of God. Your peace is in hearing the voice of God. Because where God wants you to be, there is a hedge over you there. All the people that are connected to me, uh, we are connected. There is a spiritual hedge that we can't see with our physical eyes. But well, there's a hedge. In the realm of the spirit, there is a hedge. And why am I teaching this today? When we pray in the spirit, promote the will of God. That's one of the, the reasons why I encourage people to pray in the spirit. It helps us to focus on the will of God. You know, one of the keys to success is to be able to focus on God's will. Now, to focus on God's will is the foundation for manifesting greater things of the Spirit. That's a foundation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I, I want to show you a scripture in, in Acts, Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. I want to show you what Paul did. Acts 19 from verse 1. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Acts 19 from verse 1. Thank you, Lord. If you're led by the Spirit, you will not hurt your future. You can have a life of progress. You can have a life of progress. Let me show this to you. You can have a life that is here right now. Watch my hands. Watch my illustration if you're watching me. Your life can be here right now. 
and the next month is here, and the next month is here, and the next month is here, and the next, you just, you can have that kind of life. And that kind of life is possible when you're led by the Spirit. That's why that life is possible. When you are led by the Spirit, that life is possible. It's not possible when you're in the flesh. It's possible when you're led by the Spirit. In, in, first, in Acts chapter 19, verse 1, Acts 19, verse 20, said, And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, and it came to, came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul passing through the upper coast came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He found certain disciples. Verse 2 said, he said unto them, have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believe? Have ye received the Holy Ghost? Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believe? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. You know, these are believers. These are people in the body of Christ. And Paul was asking them, have ye received the Holy Ghost? Things you believe. They say they haven't heard about the Holy Ghost. And, and look at verse 3. And he said unto them, Unto what, unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. What a baptism is different from being baptized in the Spirit. They were baptized with water baptism. So why is Paul telling them the need? For them to have the baptism of the Spirit, but the evidence of praying in tongues. Look at verse 4 said, Then said Paul, John verily baptized with baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that ye should believe on him that should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. Verse 5 When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied. When Paul laid his hands on them, they pray in tongues and they prophesied. Why did that happen? He laid his hands on them and they prayed in tongues. The Holy Ghost came on them. There was a manifestation of the Spirit that came upon them and they prayed in tongues. And the Bible said, and all the men were about 12. About 12 of them. He ministered to them. So let's begin to look at the benefits of praying in tongues. If you want to experience the manifestation of tongue for anyone who is watching that have not experienced that, you need to desire it. And if you desire it, you will have it. But if you don't desire it, you may not walk in that manifestation. You must desire it. You must see it as part of your New Testament inheritance. You must see it as if, if I can, you know, yesterday I was sharing with some of our people that was here, and the Lord begins to show me what happened down the family line, and they said, Apostle, we haven't told you this. We haven't told you this. How did you know this? We haven't told you this. There was no way you can know this. I said it was by the Spirit. There are certain things my head can pick. Can you imagine you're, you're trying to remember what happened 40 years ago? You can't remember it if you're not there. But the Spirit can show you what happened 40 years ago. As we pray in the Spirit, the doors of supernatural utterance is open to us. The door of supernatural utterance and you have a supernatural utterance. It's open to us the door of supernatural utterance. As we pray in the Spirit, you know, I, had, I don't know if I've told you this before, but just one of the victories I recorded by praying in tongues. Many years ago, I used to be a student in one of the universities in our country. So I went to pick up some money somewhere that I would use to go back to school. So I got to a particular place in my city. And when I got to the place, I saw a 
or if 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 a flyer, a very big flyer, a big sign, something like a, a postcard on the wall. So I was looking at it. Then the Holy Ghost told me, "Be a lot." I said, "Be a lot for what?" <laughs> This place is crowded with people. This is an open, uh, open, busy area in my city. Vehicles are moving. People are moving. You know, so he told me be a lot. As he said to me, be a lot. Few minutes later, I saw one of these uh, young men who still who do all kinds of crazy things. He just blocks me. Wow! When the young man teaching English. In my part of the country, that's what they call pidgin English. It's not really English. It's like a how, you know, in, you know, in the U.S., you have people who speak correct English. <laughs> and you have people who speak all kinds of words, jamming it together, something like that. And the young man told me, in, let me just speak, let me say the way he said it. You declaim. That is what he said. You declaim, you know, he blocks me. You know what came up in my spirit? Just spoken tongues. Leave Bashoka. You know, so, something just came up in my spirit. The young man was speaking to me in pidgin English. I was responding in tongues. Wow. He was talking to me in English. I was responding in tongues. And people started running. All the people that were by my side, because in my city they are robbing you. Nobody's looking at you. Everybody's passing. They are walking away. And I was having my phones. I was having my money. You know what happened? He wasn't able to rob me. And before, while he was trying to get at me, he was wondering, what kind of person am I talking to? Am I talking to a ghost? Is he a spirit? Because when he speaks in English, I respond in tongues. I never descended to his level. Few minutes later, I saw an armed military man coming towards our direction. And I couldn't find the young man anymore. He took off. What happened? What happened? Spiritually, what happened? I want to tell you what happened. When you pray in the spirit, you are exercising authority over demonic forces. That's one of the things you do. When you're praying the spirit to So, a, a church in Lagos, you know, there were many years ago, there was so much kidnapping in Lagos. They were kidnapping people and doing all kinds of crazy things. And a pastor came to the church and announced to the members. And he said, if they kidnap you, don't beg them. Don't beg them. You begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. You begin to pray in the spirit. And you know what the devil likes to do? He likes to text things out. And a few weeks later, a sister in that local church was being kidnapped. And she was in the service when the pastor said, don't beg them. As this, the kidnappers took her and they were driving going and she busted in tongues. Busted in tongues. And, were, and they were slapping her. And they got to a point, they off the car, and those guys took off. What happened? What happened? This is a supernatural move of God. This is a, we, we had a young man in our local church many years ago, and the service closed, and he was going back home. And there was a particular place in our city where they used to steal at night. If you're passing that area, they could just take your phones. They could all this wrong, you know. I don't know what happened in your country, but in my city, you have some people who steal from people. <laughs> I know you don't have that in the UK, in the US, in the Canada. <laughs> but in my country, I have some people who steal from people. <laughs> so, so I got to pray with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> So that's why I prayed the Holy Ghost <laughs> to keep folks away from my stuff. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the, 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 the service closed, and this young man was walking home, and he saw these three guys before him stopping him. And he remembered what we taught in church. 
in situations like this, pray in the Holy Ghost. And while he was praying the Holy Ghost, and the people looked at him and said, maybe he's mad. Maybe he's mad. And they walk away. They walk away. Praying the Spirit can take you out of the trap of death. Yes. You know, when Paul did this for them, why would an apostle lay hands on people for them to receive? Because he knows the benefit. As we pray in the spirit, we take control of the spiritual climate of our life. Now, there are people who say, Lord, I want to pray in the Holy Ghost. And suddenly it happened to them, bam, like that. They started praying the Spirit. It came upon them by the help of the Spirit. And the people that ask, Lord, I want to pray in the Holy Ghost. And the Lord wants them to just have someone they can agree with in faith and pray together for there to be a release of the manifestation. I have this sister in a local church, you know, she was believing God to receive the Holy Ghost baptism. So I prayed for her several times. And he said, Pastor, I've not received. I said, you're going to receive. And one day, we're just in the meeting, and the power of God came upon her, bam! And then she started praying in tongues, as the Spirit gave her utterance. So when we pray in the Spirit, it helps us to take control of the flesh. One of the ways you take control of the flesh is by praying in the Spirit. Yes, you take control of the flesh. As you have, you know, like... Uh, Kenneth Hagin said, he said that praying in the spirit is the doorway to the manifestation of other gifts of the spirit. And I agree with him. I agree with him that praying in the spirit is the doorway to other manifestation of other gifts of the spirit. So praying in the spirit is a doorway to the manifestation of other gifts of the spirit. As you pray in the spirit, let it become something that is natural. Let it, let it uh, flow from you. Enjoy it. You know, someone said, but I personally I'm praying, but I don't really understand what I'm praying. Oh, it, it's not about understanding. It's about the activity, what is happening in the spirit. Because the enemy will discourage you from praying in tongues. The enemy will discourage you, will tell you it's not working. It's not working. It's not working. Why are you praying in the spirit? It's not working. The enemy will try to say that to you, to make you believe that praying in the spirit is wrong. And let me say this to you, miracles, signs and wonder, healing, did not end with the apostles. It is for today, church. Miracles, healing. Some few weeks back, I had a, a great pain on this part of my teeth here, a great pain, you know. It was a severe pain, and I was thinking about, the, why do I go, what do I do, you know? But, but, but in my spirit, I just said, let me believe God for healing. Let me trust God for healing. Let me trust God for healing. And I started believing God for healing. Because sometimes healing belongs, healing belongs to us, but sometimes we don't really receive the healing. We don't think about that I need to be healed from this. You know, there are problems we have managed. There are situations we have managed. We have said, okay, let it just be that way. But, but we can be healed from those things. We can be healed from them. We can be delivered from those things. And when we pray in the spirit, we're opening door for uncommon help. One of the ways you overcome spiritual weakness is praying the Holy Ghost. That's one of the ways you overcome a spiritual weakness is praying the Spirit. Sometimes you're tired to pray, you know. You're, you're very tired, true. You can be tired from to pray. Now, I just, have, I just need to tell you how sincere I, I can be with you. Sometimes you don't feel like praying. Have anybody been there before? You don't feel like praying. You don't feel like reading your Bible. Have it, do I have anyone here today that you open the Bible, but it's not making sense? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, I like to be sincere. Don't what? Don't bother. You are you're, you're not the only person that is there. A lot of people are going through that. But you see, the, the, the things of the Spirit doesn't come to us naturally. The things of the Spirit will not come to you naturally. True. You this Bible, you not just come and say, Oh, you think the devil wants you to read this. He doesn't want you to read this. Because reading this is putting the enemy out of your life. Have you noticed you can watch a movie for three hours, four hours, five hours, eight, just relax? 
But reading this for one hour can be very challenging. No, you can agree with me. Yeah. Yes, can be. So to, to pray is a decision. So if you're not praying in tongues right now, enjoy praying in English. Enjoy praying, maybe praying with scriptures, just be going. And maybe suddenly the Holy Ghost is going to break through that thing. Hallelujah. It's going to break through that thing. So prayer doesn't come to you naturally. If you think it will come to you naturally, no, it will not happen. You pray by decision. You have to decide to pray. You have to decide to read your Bible. You also have to decide to fast. <laughs> Especially when you have plenty, so much food in your house. When you have so much food in your house, the fast becomes a decision. I'm not saying that you're hungry. You have your chickens, you have your talk, you have your eggs, you have your, call something for me. <laughs> thing becomes challenging. First thing becomes challenging. Yeah, true. There are people who have not fasted for the past three months. It's not easy for them to fast. <laughs> yes, fasting becomes challenging because you have the food. You, you know, how do you know someone who, who, who fasts, you know, is that all the food are there, you're looking at them. And someone says, Apostle, whenever I'm fasting, I'll be hungry. Yes, yes, you, sh you should be hungry when you're fasting. And you continue to fast and ignore the hunger. <laughs> So I don't feel like eating. I, <laughs> I just felt like I just felt like eating, Apostle. Yes, when you're when you're fasting, you feel like eating. You know, I tried one time to fast, you know, and oh my god, I tried, I tried. It was 10 getting to 10 a.m. I said, I don't think I can survive this. I need to eat. <laughs> <laughs> true, true, true story, true story. Then a hedgehog gave me a testimony that he fasted for long hours. I said, my God, you know, <laughs> you, know you know, sometimes you got to drag your flesh. <laughs> your flesh is saying, oh, not this week, not this week. Next, next week, next week, we'll fast. Next week. Then next week comes and no, next week, next week. Next week. So it takes a lot of decision to say, this week, I'm not eating anything. I'm telling you, because if you think it's going to come to you naturally, it will not. Don't just try to lie to yourself. It will not come. It takes a decision to say, I'm going to fast for one week. Yes. It takes a decision, whether it's 6 to 12, whether it's 6 to 6, whether you're fasting for, for every nine hours. It takes decision because do you know why it takes decision? It's a spiritual exercise. And Satan doesn't find it funny. Because when you start fasting, you, your sensitivity begins to your sensitivity begins to increase. So it doesn't come natural to you. When we declare the 40 days of prayer, wow. Some people look at me, Pastor, are you normal? Pastor, are you okay? <laughs> he said, <"Do> be <laughs> I said, I'm normal. <laughs> but we're going to push this up. You know why? Whenever you stretch spiritually, you don't return back the same way. True. Whenever you stretch, you know, sometimes we, we, we want to stretch people in this ministry. Can we do a fast for 20 days? Can we do a fast for 10 days? And so when we say, what are we fasting for? One of the things we are fasting for, we're fasting to increase our sensitivity to, to what, our sensitivity things, our sensitivity towards the things of the spirit. I'm telling you, there is a manifestation of power you cannot see except in the place of fasting and prayer. The power is there, but the release of the power. There is a boldness you experience in the place of fasting and prayer. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, there is a boldness that, that comes upon you when you begin to fast and pray. When you begin to fast and pray. And whenever you're fasting, take a lot of water. Drink so much water. Hmm? Take a lot of water. The Bible said that Jesus was hungry. He never said that Jesus was thirsty. The Bible talks about Jesus was hungry. 
You get what I'm saying right now? So when you're fasting, take drink a lot of water. I don't subscribe to dry fast. I'm sorry, you may have a different theology, but I don't subscribe to a fast where you don't drink water. No, I don't. You know why? Because that's not healthy. Except God told you to do that. He said, but Apostle Moses did it. Moses was in the presence of God. The glory of God covered Moses. Have the glory of God covered you? <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so when, 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 you, when you fast, drink a lot of water. It helps your system. The major reason... The, the major reason why we will fast is to pray. The major reason why we need to fast is to pray. Is to read the word the more. You know, is to pray, is to read the word the more. You know, to listen to teaching. You know, sometimes you can hear teaching that can help you, but you don't understand it. Because your spirit man is not receiving. It, it's not receiving. But when you begin to fast, and pray. I like to fast and pray. I like it. I like to pray. Because it's going to help you. And, and let me say this to you. Let me, you know, I need to share this because a lot of us are becoming guilty right now. Let me say this to you. You can fast from 6 to 12. You can fast from 6. You can miss a, a breakfast. Just a breakfast. You can also decide to miss a breakfast and a lunch. The, the, the major purpose is to fast. Hallelujah. The major purpose is just that you're, you're reading the word, you're praying, you're reading the word, you're praying. And, and in the course of fast, God, there are things God can reveal to you. There are believers today that don't believe in fasting. They say the days of fasting is over. No problem. We shouldn't argue about that with them. But I want to encourage you to pray and fast. <laughs> I want to encourage you to fast and to pray. It may be to miss a meal, that you miss a meal and take time to read the Bible, to do your worship, to spend. Let me ask you this question. Have you ever fasted and prayed and you felt like you can raise the dead? You can cast out devils. You can do something. That was how you feel. Let me see your hands. Good. Good. <laughs> you fasted and you prayed. That was how you... You felt that I can do this. I can do that. But why don't you feel it when you're not, when you're not there? Because in the things of the Spirit, we, we develop capacity to do certain things. There are things we cannot do except when the place of prayer and fasting. <laughs> I believe in the old tradition of the church and they fasted and prayed and the Holy Ghost spoke, separate me, Paul and Barnabas. I believe in it. So I was apostle, are you not a great preacher? You, don't you believe in the grace message? Ah, we are all grace people. We are all saved by grace. The master, the man who brought the message of grace was a man who prayed and fast. Paul and Silas, they prayed, they sang, and the Holy Ghost did something for them. So as you pray, take your spiritual walk to another level. Take your spiritual walk to another level by spending time to pray in the spirit, spending time to read the word, spending time to meditate on scriptures, spending time to make confection of God's word. You know, sometimes, you know, the Lord just said something to me. I was trying to fix something some few days back. And how many of you know that your faith can decline from one point to the other? And your faith can go from one point to the other. I mean, if you know something like that. Do you know your... That's good. Thank you very much, Chuck. Thank you very much, uh, uh, sister. Now, uh, your faith can be here. Uh, your faith can be here. And you did so many things. If you're not careful, that faith can come down. And you couldn't do much as you wanted to do because the faith to do it is not there. Now, God begins to talk to me about, hey, you need to move your faith up a little bit. Come on. You need to hear the word, you know, so I started listening to some teachings, you know, on faith. Someone said, but you teach on faith. Why are you listening to teachings on faith? Yes, because there are things I want to do. I want my faith to be up, you know. I want my faith. Somebody teach on faith to believe God. Yes, 
I do believe God, but you know, like a refresh courses, your refresher courses where your your thoughts again on faith, the basic. You know, some people are looking for deep revelation. Oh, can I have deep revelation, Apostle? No, I don't give deep revelation. I give simple truths that help people get better. Because a lot of people have gotten deep revelation and their life is still scattered. <laughs> you need more than a deep revelation. You need a simple body. Amen. Can someone, someone hear me today? Have faith in God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. There is nothing deep about that. Praise the Lord. You know, some people will say things like, oh, nobody can understand my teachings. My teachings are very stuff, you know. Let me say this. I don't, I don't want to listen to someone I can't understand. What is the essence of listening to you when I can't understand? You know, some people, some preachers will, will, will brag with that and say, my teachings are so, so tough that people cannot easily understand me. Why they're about to preach to you, they're telling you, you know, my teachings, I don't want to listen to people like that. I don't want to listen to people like that. How can I spend my whole time listening to you when I know your teachings are tough? Even Jesus, his teachings were simple. He spoke to fishermen. He spoke to market women. He spoke to people, common people. His ministry brought hope to people. So why are people, some people's ministry is deep. Everything about them is deep. No, you don't need a deep revelation. You need a gospel truth that will change your mind, that will transform your thinking. So we need to go back to the basics of the gospel. I think we need to do some special classes on faith again. Hallelujah. How to take our faith up again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, someone said, but, 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 Apostle, you've taught on faith before. Yes, we need to teach on it again. Praise the Lord. And the more we teach on it, your faith gets better. We need to teach again on how to speak the word of God. Oh, I've taught that before. But the more we teach that, you get it by love. No, Apostle, but I've heard that before. We need to teach about that again. The basis of our faith will strengthen the foundation of our faith. Teaching on the basis of our faith will strengthen the foundation of our faith. Teaching the basis of our faith. And then things that can help you. A lot of people, a lot of people right now who are in doubt, they are in unbelief. They are afraid. They don't know what is going to happen. But they have heard me teach on faith. So why are they afraid? Why are they in doubt? Because once in a while, those teachings have to come back to help people bring forth into the new things God wants them to have. I'm here to say to you today, the victory belongs to you. No matter what you're seeing, victory is possible. No matter what you've heard, God is bringing you into a place of increase. No matter what is happening to you, all things are possible. Don't give up on your faith because you're not where you ought to be spiritually right now. You get what I'm saying right now? Don't give up on your faith. I'm talking to someone right now and you feel like, man, I'm getting tired of uh, all the situations around me, all the challenges around me. No, uh, don't give up on your faith. Miracles are going to happen. I expect a miracle this week. I expect doors open for you this week. I expect things to happen for you this week. I expect the favor of God to be upon you this week. I want you to expect a miracle. I'm talking to someone right now. I expect a miracle. I expect that things are going to break forth and you won't remain the same. You won't remain the same. I want to share this testimony. Actually, this testimony was a testimony of, uh, of someone in a local church that her relation was being... Her relation went to the bank one day, and when she went to the bank, she, she came up from the bank to enter a taxi, and she entered the taxi. She never knew that the people that were in the taxi were ritualists, people who kill people to do all kinds of sacrifices. You know what happened? So they, they carried this girl. This girl never knew. They took her to a place. They, the girl never knew. And they were taking her from place to place. And they took her phones. They, she couldn't call her parents. No, no, nobody knew where she was. And then we started believing God for this girl. And this girl was talking to God and said, Lord, save me from this situation. Lord, save me. And the juju priest, you know, in Africa, they have part of Africa, they have what they call juju. Juju means a shrine, means a demonic activity. So the priest of that 
shrine, prepared this girl to be sacrificed, and then prepared her finish and tell her to walk into the river. Because when she walked into the river, the gods, the made sacrifice that will pick her up, will just take her and she'll be gone. But we were praying. And when this girl entered into the river, was going, was going. And the priest, the Jew priest, couldn't tell her to continue. The priest told her, come out, come out. This is the wrong sacrifice. This is the wrong sacrifice. The brother, where am I going to get another person right now? You know what was happening? When prayer begins to go, when prayer is going on, things are changing. That girl came back alive. But before she came back alive, those same people carried her to somewhere else to sell her to someone else. And she was inside the vehicle. The driver had left her. And she was praying, Lord, save me from this vehicle. And you know what happened? The guy was coming with two hefty men that would come and carry this girl. And while they were coming, the guy never knew that the remote of his car, supernaturally, he just pressed and the door opened. And the young man was coming, talking with the two men that was coming to carry her. And she heard the voice, now you can open the car and run. I've opened the door. She heard the voice. And she opened the car and she ran. Wow. When I heard the testimony, I was so, I was, I said, God, you are reminding God because at this point, that girl will be killed. Nobody will save her. This is how you heard people said their son is missing, their daughter is missing, their husband is missing, their wife is missing, and they're looking for them. You can't find them because they have used them for sacrifice. And the girl ran into one house and the woman wanted to shout. And the guy said, please don't shout. These people have carried me for many days now. They want to kill me. So the woman covered her up and the people came back on their car looking. The girl was gone. You know what happened? The young man who was driving this car ran and called the girl's parents on the phone and said, forgive me. Pray that God will forgive me my sin. I was the one responsible. Can I say this to you, church? Prayers go beyond those who pray them. When you start praying, things will start changing. I'm saying this because of someone in this meeting today and someone watching me. Nothing is so difficult that prayer cannot reverse. That testimony encouraged my faith when I was hearing it, I said, only God can do this. Prayers. Prayers. Fasting. <laughs> this is the cure. <laughs> when you pray and fast, God will hear you. Then when you speak the word, God will hear you. I still believe in the power of prayer and fasting. And there is someone here today God is already staring up your heart. You need to fast this week. You need to take these things in prayer, this event you're having. You need to spend like two days, like one day, and just talk to what is going to happen. Pray about your expectation. Pray about things. Just pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Have I ministered to anyone here today? Have I? Have I? Have I reached out to someone here today? Hallelujah. And as you pray, things that are about to go wrong will start going right. Prayer makes things that are about to go wrong to go right. You get what I'm saying right now? They were going this way, but as you pray, they bring that, you bring them this way. You watch what I did? Eh? Things were going wrong. They were going this way. But when you begin to pray, they start moving. They start moving. They start coming this way. Your prayer will shift things and position them right. Don't ever say, I'm tired of praying. Don't ever say, I've prayed enough. Don't ever say, well, I've been praying, but nothing is happening. No. Stay in the place of prayer. 
That's why we pray in the Holy Ghost. As we can continue to have victory. The victory is possible. Someone is going to smile before the end of this month. Your joy will be complete. I'm telling you, there is something you've been dealing with, but your joy will be complete before the end of this month. I brought you that prophetic word. I'm sure of what I've said. Your joy will be complete as you engage in this principle of prayer and fasting and spend some time on the fast that I've chosen. That I may lose the bound of wickedness. There are certain things that your press will go free. Let's look at Isaiah. That's the last picture, and then I'll close. Amen. Isaiah 53. I like us to Isaiah 53. Let's oh God, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you. One minute, one minute. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. 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 Mm. I'm looking for something. <laughs> I'm trying to find it. So just excuse me. Praise the Lord. You know, sometimes you just, the Spirit of God bring a scripture into your spirit. So you are trying to get it in the appropriate place where it ought to be. You know, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. One minute, please. I need to give you that scripture. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You know, I, I want to be sure of what I'm saying concerning this. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Mm. Okay, I got it. Isaiah 58, verse 5. Thank you. Isaiah 58, verse 5. In Isaiah 58, verse 5, thank you, Lord. It said, It is for a man to afflict his soul. It is for a man to do what? To afflict his soul is to bow down his head. You know, so fast is something that is chosen. And, and look at verse 6. Sorry, I didn't complete that, but look at verse 6. Verse 6 said, Is not this the fast that I have chosen to lose the band of wickedness? You know, one of the ways we lose the band of wickedness is when we fast. Isaiah 50 or 58, verse 6. Is not this the Fast that I have chosen to lose the hand, the band, so the band of wickedness to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed to go free, and that the yoke and that well, that's fine. When you fast, you do what you break yokes. So there are things you want to break. Can you just say that like one day this week? And so I'm trusting God to break all these things. Praise the Lord. That's a very powerful scripture. And, and look at verse, it said, Then shall your light break forth as the morning, and the, thy head will spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go forth. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. You know, when, when, when we fast and pray, we'll break forth. When we fast and pray, we'll break forth. And, and this is what the Lord is telling someone. Make this week a week of prayer about those things. And that's what the Lord is telling me. This is not part of what I'm supposed to say today, but the Holy Ghost just dropped that in my heart. He said, make this week a week of prayer for the preparation of what you're about to do. Take time, at least like two hours, three hours, to, to pray, to talk to God about things this week. And believe God that things will shift. Believe God that things will move. Believe God that you have some supernatural results. Thank you, Father. Lord, I thank you for this broadcast. I thank you for everyone that is watching around the world. Lord, well, thank you because you, you just dropped words in our hearts, words of life, words of peace, things that will help us grow and develop in our walk of faith. Thank you, Jesus. If you're watching this broadcast and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, uh, you can say this after me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth, uh, I believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father for saving me.
Amen. The Brody's Prayer with us. We want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Fitman Teachers on YouTube. And we'll be glad that you do. You did. Sorry. Glad that you did. And we we'll pray that the Lord will strengthen you. You can watch us on finishworktv.com. Our new book is available on Amazon.com. It's There is Greatness in You is available. Thank you for being part of this broadcast. Until I come your way soon, please don't forget this. There is greatness in you. And Jesus is coming soon.